Sandy presented planners and politicians with some tough questions. The governors of New York and New Jersey both talked about Sandy in the respective annual State of the State address. But overall, how did the two speeches compare? We're going to ask Nick Confessori of the New York Times and Alfred Doblin of The Record in just a minute. But first, let's hear some of what the governors had to say. As we assess the state of our state this afternoon, we should be proud of our record, our record. The state is stronger today than it has been in years. We are recovering and growing. We are not declining and descending. We are working together, not just as a people, in digging out from Sandy and rebuilding our economy. Now, we're working together here in Trenton, in this chamber. Now, we've had our fights, and we have stuck to our principles. But we have established a governing model for America that shows that even with heartfelt beliefs, bipartisan compromise is possible, achievement is the result, and progress for our people is the payoff. So my friends, what is the state of New York State? The state of New York State is that New York State is rising. New York State is rising because it's more unified than ever before. New York State is rising to build back better and stronger than ever before. New York State is rising to build a smarter, stronger state than we've ever had before. New York State is rising with a passion and a commitment to make this state better than it's ever been with a brighter future than it's ever had for your family and for my family. And New York is rising with us together as one committed to that vision and making it a reality this year. Thank you and God bless you. Although Governor Cuomo was a little louder <laughs> than Governor Christie, the two uh, bites that we just saw were very similar in their optimism and uh, their rhetoric, but the two speeches couldn't have been more different. That's right. Nick, talk about some of the differences in the speeches. If, if you go into the details, what you see uh, from Christie's speech is the speech of a conservative Republican who's preparing to run for governor again uh, in a state where most voters are not Republicans. And if you look at the speech that Cuomo gave, you see a Democratic governor in a Democratic state who spent the first two years uh, of, his, of his term uh, on fiscal policy, cutting spending, you know, you know, cutting uh, pensions, capping property taxes. And this was his pivot into gun control and raising the minimum wage and abortion rights, the traditional laundry list of, of uh, democratic and liberal agenda items. So you think he moved to the left with this? Absolutely. But you know, he said some things about education reform and about economic development that Christie could have said in this speech. I mean, it's amazing. At this point, you know, you know t education reform, uh, teachers unions, all that stuff has become so bipartisan. Uh, President Obama is taking on teachers unions. Uh, uh, it, is, it is now a, a centrist thing to do that. Um, but, 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 but you're right, uh, it's more about the emphasis. You know, he wants to reestablish that after uh, some bruising battles in his first two years with the core constituencies of his own party, that he can be a progressive on their issues too. Now, Alfred, uh, you wrote that what was, disappointed, what was disappointing about Governor Christie's speech was not what he said, but what he didn't say. What are some of the things that he didn't say that he should have? Well, he focused so much on Sandy, you know, and, I mean, almost to the point that you, you figured he should have worn the fleece, you know, because it was really a, a feel-good kind of speech about we're New Jerseyans, we've been through something really terrible, and I think the impact has been a little different in New Jersey than in New York because the state is so much smaller, so it's felt a little more personal. But he didn't get into any of the real problems that the state has had. I mean, there's bipartisanship on Sandy, but he couldn't get his Supreme Court nominees through in a really horrible, nasty partisan fight. And there was no talk about gaming, which Cuomo talked about. Right. And there's a north and south issue going on in the state about the casinos that are not doing well down in Atlantic City and whether we should have casinos somewhere else. And, and I think Cuomo declared war on New Jersey when it came to gaming. Right. Um, so some of those those issues were not there. And he didn't even talk about his, his tax cut, which no one knows if he can really afford, which is a real partisan issue. Right. Well, Nick, on the other hand, <laughs> Governor Cuomo, there was hardly anything he didn't mention. He even talked about uh, marketing uh, upstate yogurt <laughs> in right. that speech. <laughs> um, it's not only different uh, from what right. uh, Governor Christie said in his speech, but it's different from his previous State of the State speech. Why did he take this approach? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you know, he's very proud of the yogurt because it, to me, it's, it's a signifier of his jobs agenda. Um, his real 
concern. His one kind of weakness as a governor, um, which is not entirely his fault, is job creation. He is just not putting up the job creation numbers that you want to put up if you're going to run for president in a couple of years. So that economic agenda is core to him and bringing the yogurt factory uh, to upstate, helping them establish their flagship store down in New York City and Soho were kind of big things for him. Now, as you mentioned, gun control was a key item mm -hmm. in uh, Governor Cuomo's speech. Um, and in fact, uh, he spoke a lot about it, and here's a little bit of what he had to say about that. Let's take a listen. I know that the issue of gun control is hard. I know it's political. I know it's controversial. But we are proposing today common sense measures. And I say to you, forget the extremists. It's simple. No one hunts with an assault rifle. No one needs 10 bullets to kill a deer. And too many innocent people have died already. And the madness now. Nick, uh, yeah. less than a week after he spoke those words, he signed into law some of the most comprehensive uh, gun control legislation in the country. Uh, how was he able to get it past the legislature so quickly? And should he have? Well, Albany is not Washington. Um, it's a democratic state. He's a democratic governor. He's long been in favor of more gun control. There are democratic majorities in the assembly and the Senate. There are the votes. So in, in some sense, it's not surprising that they were able to do this. There was sentiment supporting it, um, and it's popular in the state. He, he is doing what the voters of New York, most of them, uh, are asking for. Alfred, uh, gun control is popular in New Jersey as well, but Governor Christie didn't mention it at all in his speech. That's one of the things he didn't mention. Didn't even make a reference to uh, Newtown. Well, but I don't know if it's as popular maybe in New Jersey as it may be in parts of New York. And there is a you know, Republican governor and a Democratic-controlled legislature, so there's going to be a certain amount of tension between getting anything done. Um, what I found troubling is that in New Jersey, you're finding more school districts now opting to hire armed guards. I mean, there's, there's a wave of them starting to happen in the last couple of weeks. Um, and that's something that I think the governor, even if he wants to be sort of a centrist Republican and say, you know, smart, sensible gun control, we've got strong laws in New Jersey, we, we need to do something more to stop the sort of the sense of panic. Both of these guys mm -hmm. seem like they're looking at the 2016 presidential race. So you think that they'd be all over each other, beating each other up, but they actually seem to like each other and they've been working together well. Why do you think that is, Nick? I want to get both of you those. Well, they're governors in neighboring states. They have uh, certain economic interests in common. They share control of the Port Authority, which is an opportunity that they've had to work together on stuff. They have a mutual foe in Mayor Bloomberg, uh, <laughs> who they've not gotten along with very well. Um, and it's interesting, though. I think, to some extent, these two guys have a lot in common political. Uh, mm. uh, uh, you know, they are both... Uh, guys who are running against what they consider the entrenched political establishments in, in their own state capitals. Uh, for, you know, for Cuomo, it is both a Republican and a Democratic entrenched uh, establishment. And for Christie, it's Democratic. But still you have the, these two guys who are kind of brawling with their own people and trying to get things done. And that's what they have in common in their own kind of uh, their political identity, I think. What do you think, Elvis? Well, they're both very strong individuals, and I don't know if we, we've had a strong New Jersey governor and a strong New York governor at the same time. Mm. And I don't remember when we've had a New Jersey governor who can actually get more national press than any governor in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> so I think that's reconfiguring it. But if you're going to run for president in 2016, I think mm. you need to be seen as the person that can get along with the other party. So I think both of them are being very smart and saying, look, I can get a, a Republican, I can get along with the governor of New York, the progressive capital, if I listen to the speech correctly, <laughs> of the world, and I think for Cuomo, you know, I can get, I can get along with yeah. this tough guy Republican. Okay. All right, guys, that'll have to be it. Thanks, Alfred. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.